Hey there, I'm out here in the park feeding the mosquitoes and I'm also testing this, well, brand new to me, Veltrox 13mm f1.4 wide angle lens. There's a couple of interesting features with this lens that together is hopefully going to give us, let's call it an IMAX grandiose kind of, you know, ability to compose certain types of shots. So the first feature is obviously going to be the f1.4 aperture, which is also going to be great for low light situations, indoors, outdoors, well, you know, and it's also going to give us a blurry background, especially if we get pretty close to our subject. And there's a pretty decent close focus distance on this lens. So paired with that f1.4 and the close focus and distance, and the fact that this lens is, well, damn near rectilinear. I hope I said that. It's not rectilinear, rectilinear, which means that there's very little distortion on this lens. Typically, if you're shooting people, if you're shooting portraits with a super wide angle lens like this, you're going to get those kind of, you know, distorted shapes. Uh, you know, you've seen pictures where the legs of a person looks like they're like seven meters long or the face looks really, you know, elongated and, and weird like that. So I'm thinking that with the f1.4 aperture, the close focus and distance and very low levels of distortion, if any, we should be able to get something that kind of reminds us of the grandioseness of IMAX or, you know, 70 millimeter film and that kind of stuff. So I don't know if this is going to work, but let's let's put it to the test. And I'm also yeah, I brought my gimbal with me here because I, I figured this might also be a pretty good lens for gimbal work. So we'll sneak in some gimbal shots as well. Well, let's hop to it. Okay, so this might be an interesting location. We're shooting uphill. It's very, very steep, steep and long hill. You can see by the elevation here. And how about, this is the Fujifilm X-T4 by the way. Now to spare you from my panting here in this slope, I just wanted to explain these white borders here. That's because they were shot in different aspect ratios. 16 by 9 on the Sony with 13 mil and the kind of controlled comparison shot here in the beginning was shot on 17 by 9 on my Fujifilm. Just because I like to keep my aspect ratio here on YouTube to a 2 by 1. So hope that makes sense. 13.5 millimeters might sound really, really wide, but on a full frame camera, this would be close to 19, 20 millimeters. So it's not super duper wide. There's obviously gonna be some transitioning for you if you're not used to shooting this wide. You have to get really close to your subject in order for you to fill the frame with your subject. Otherwise, your subject is going to be just a tiny little dot somewhere lost with a big sky and huge amount of foreground in the shot if you don't get up and close. But getting up and close with your subject, especially with a lens like this that opens up to 1.4, is also going to give you slightly better subject separation if you want to have that blurry background. And it's also going to be great if you like to crop to a more narrow or wider aspect ratio in post, obviously, to kind of shave off a little of that excess sky or foreground, what have you. So in a way, 13mm on an APC Super 35 camera kind of makes a lot of sense, especially if you're also using things like digital image stabilization in your camera or if you're using warp stabilizer and those kind of features that usually crops in a bit on your image. 
And if you're using a camera like the Sony FX30 and you like to shoot in higher frame rates like 4K 100 or 120 frames per second, then you know that you're also gonna have an additional 1.5 times crop at 4K 120. So at 4K 120 on the FX30, the, uh, the 13 mil is gonna be more like a 30 mil equivalent on a full frame. Now, something I've been very, very happy with when it comes to Veltrox lenses in the past is the autofocus performance, both in terms of stickiness and also smoothness. And I've been shooting a lot with Fujifilm where finding smooth autofocus lenses can be quite tricky. And I'm happy to report that the autofocus performance on the FX30 here is as good, well, not as good, it's actually much, much better than on my Fujifilm X-T4. As you can see here, I hope you can see the little boxes here on the screen. I, I did my best, maybe I can punch in a little bit more. There you go. So as you can see, even if I'm wearing a cap, if I'm backlit, and I'm also wearing glasses, obviously the, uh, the boxes, they find my face, they stick to it, even finds my eye here. And the autofocus moving back and forth like this is to me looking very, very smooth. And something that I've always been very impressed with when it comes to autofocus on the Veiltrox lenses is also how they handle focus breathing. The 23 mil that I've been shooting a lot with have very very slight focus breathing i mean there's uh, i mean it's it's one of the uh, the best lenses i've seen especially in this price range now the 13 mil is dare i say even better i mean take a look at this and if you look at the trees and the background here there's not a whole lot of, of focus breathing going on with this lens so I mean, I think it's it's even better than the 23 mil that I've shot a lot with. So in terms of autofocus performance and focus breathing, I'm super duper happy with the 13 mil here. And here's another little low light autofocus test. I, I did this kind of vlog and low light autofocus combo test here. And even if I did manage to, well, severely underexpose my footage here, thanks to Cine EI, the autofocus is still very, very smooth and sticky. I don't see any hesitation or any pulsing here, even if I'm walking around and uh, tripping over fallen trees and that kind of stuff. And while I was out here doing the autofocus test, I also decided that I wanted to do some kind of product shoots with a smaller subject just to see how close I can get to the subject and also what it's like working with a smaller subject like this uh, whiskey bottle here and the glass just to see how difficult it potentially might be to, to kind of fill the frame. I did my best to kind of keep some interesting things in the foreground and also get these trees here in the background to make things look a bit more interesting but i was also shooting a bit wider because i had the idea that i wanted to see what it would look like when you shoot this wide if you crop into like a two three nine by one aspect ratio an aspect ratio you normally see if you're shooting with an anamorphic lens which will give you this ginormous field of view and here's another example where I just wanted to experiment with objects in the, uh, the background and the foreground to see what it looks like when there's more interesting things in the background or when you have a more plain background like this. And I also wanted to shoot in a very low angle to see what that looks like. And I think it looks pretty groovy actually. This lens isn't very small, it's about 410 grams, but on a camera like the FX30 here, which is, I guess, pretty standard in, in size, 
if you compare it to other APS-C cameras. It actually feels very well balanced, at least on a camera with a pretty decent grip. Now, I did talk about gimbal shots in the beginning of this video, and I had no problems getting the 13mm balanced with my FX30 here, and as you can see, I did some pretty wild movements here and uh, running back and forth just to see if the gimbal could handle the weight, and as you can see, no problem. So for things like follow shots with a gimbal like the tiny, tiny Weeble S and this lens and a camera like the FX30, you won't have any problems whatsoever. The overall design of the Viltrox 13mm kind of follows the rest of the lenses in that kind of series. Uh, an all metal build, a nice, really <laughs> wide focus ring here, which I, I do like even if it sometimes might be a bit too easy to accidentally knock the, the focus ring when you're shooting. I also like the fact that all these lenses also have an aperture ring, and if you're a video shooter, you know that these aperture rings are, or should we call it iris ring since we're you know, video shooters, it's a D-clicked iris ring or aperture ring. It kind of works like a, like a cine lens, so you can make those smooth exposure tweaks just like you do with a variable ND filter on the front of your lens. I still, you know, would be happier if these lenses had a manual autofocus switch. It's, it's not a huge issue, uh, I guess, but it's just nice to be able to get the lens into manual focus. But I mean, for this price, yeah, I, I'm not gonna complain too much about it. So overall, I'm super happy that I actually decided to get this lens. I was a bit scared at first when I started shooting with it, but after kind of, you know, leaning into that being close to your subject and filling the frame and all that I actually started to like it very very much and I think I'll actually be using this lens way more than I first anticipated so in that sense at least for me it's uh, it's a very very good purchase I won't tell you that you have to purchase this lens but if you're watching this video, chances are that you're at least considering getting this lens. And if you do, I've left a link, <laughs> surprise, surprise, in the description to Amazon where you can either purchase the lens or at least check pricing and other details and see what other people think about this lens. So yeah, if you're up for it, click the link down below and you don't have to do any typing and searching and all that boring stuff. Otherwise, that's pretty much it. So I want to thank you for watching and yeah, I hope I'll see you in the next one. Okay, bye.